The core of the problem was the immense disparity between the country's productive capacity and the ability of people to consume. Great innovations in productive techniques during and after the war raised the output of industry beyond the purchasing capacity of U.S. farmers and wage earners. Another method of government used to try and influence the private sector is economic planning. For a long time now, socialist and communist states have used planning as an alternative to the price mechanism, organizing production and distributing their resources according to social and strategic needs, rather than based on purely economic considerations. When countries assess their annual carbon dioxide emissions, they count up their cars and power stations, but bushfires are not included presumably because they are deemed to be events beyond human control in Australia. Victoria alone sees several hundred thousand hectares burn each year. In both 2004 and the present summer, the figure has been over a million hectares.
The researchers think that long-distance flyers such as the American Golden Plover and the White-Rumped Sandpiper picked up the spores while lining their nests. Then when the birds arrive in new places they melt, leaving behind the feathers and their precious cargo to start growing again at the other end of the world. Akimbo, this must be one of the odder looking words in the language. It puzzles us in part because it doesn't seem to have any relatives. What's more, it is now virtually a fossil word, until recently almost invariably found in arms akimbo, a posture in which a person stands with hands on hips and elbows sharply bent outward, one that signals impatience and hostility. Many people believe that employers discriminate against older people because youths have more energy and creativity. This is not true. The main reason for hiring younger workers is payroll in most countries, your salary is dependent on how many years of work experience you have. It is far more cost efficient to hire postgraduates, fresh out of university, than senior staff with over 20 years of industry knowledge.
Tesla actually worked for Edison in his early career. Edison offered to pay him the modern equivalent of a million dollars to fix the problems he was having with his DC generators and motors. Tesla fixed Edison's machines and when he asked him for the money he was promised, Edison laughed him off and had this to say, Tesla, you don't understand our American humor. Tesla came over from Graz and went to work for Thomas Edison. Nonetheless Edison offered him a job, promising Tesla $50,000 if Tesla could redesign Edison's breakdown-prone DC generator designs. The new generator designs were a vast improvement over Edison's originals. Upon completing the job Tesla went to Edison to collect the $50,000 promised for the task. Tesla. Edison replied, you don't understand our American humor. And Tesla was never paid. If you have a chronic disease such as heart disease, diabetes, asthma, or back or joint pain, exercise can have important health benefits. However, it is important to talk to your doctor before starting an exercise routine. He or she might have advice on what exercises are safe and any precautions you might need to take while exercising.
a long war with France had produced a wave of patriotism, with people no longer seeing each other as Saxon or Norman but as English. Marriage is a big step in anyone's life and there is an argument to be made against getting married too early. As any newlywed couple knows, there is a huge amount of financial pressure associated with marriage. Firstly, the wedding reception and honeymoon will cost you an arm and a leg. Then there's the matter of home loans, rent and energy bills. If you're looking to start a family, your child's education is another thing you need to save up for. Teenagers should probably find a proper job before deciding to tie the knot. Tesla's theoretical work formed the basis of modern alternating current electric power systems. Thomas Edison promised him almost $1 million in today's money to undertake motor and generator improvement. However, when Tesla unethical Serbs asked about the money, Edison reported reply Tesla, you don't understand our American humor. The pair becomes arch rivals.
Karl Marx is arguably the most famous political philosopher of all time, but he was also one of the great foreign correspondents of the 19th century. During his 11 years writing for the New York Tribune, their collaboration began in 1852. Marx tackled an abundance of topics, from issues of class and the state to world affairs. Never has the world of journalism been so explosive, so global, and so competitive. Forget hourly news flashes, we live in a world of 24-hour breaking news with radio and TV stations and internet sites updating stories by the minute and newspapers adjusting to stay fresh, in-depth, and relevant. Today's technological market is dominated by two contrasting business models, the generative and the non-generative. The generative models the PCs, Windows and Macs of this world allow third parties to build upon and share through them. The non-generative model is more restricted, appliances might work well, but the only entity that can change the way they operate is the vendor.
globalization has affected what we eat in ways we are only beginning to understand. Modern food production no longer related to our biological needs but is in direct conflict with them. The relationship between diet and our fertility, our cancer, heart diseases and mental illness is becoming clear. Yet much of our food is nutritionally bankrupt. Margaret Simons explains the changes taking place in the Australian media. She analyzes audiences, our major media organizations, the role of government, the implications of all of these for our society, and our democracy. Her examination leads her to the conclusion that the challenges facing the content providers in the modern world are part of a broader striving. The development of easy-to-use statistical software has changed the way statistics is being taught and learned. Students can make transformations of variables, create graphs of distributions of variables, and select among statistical analyzes all at the click of a button. However, even with these advancements, students sometimes still find statistics to be an arduous task.
parents can communicate their personal feelings about undesirable programs both by discouraging their children from watching them and by writing to their local television station. The public does have a voice. Not all programs need to please everybody. We do have a choice of programs and we also have a choice for ourselves and at least for our younger children. When buying a house, for example, it's best to let our unconscious mull over the many variables. But when we're picking stocks and shares, intuition often leads us astray. The trick is to determine when to lean on which part of the brain, and to do this, we need to think harder and smarter about how we think. Parents need to take control of the television viewing of preschoolers and children of early school age. A workable technique is to make a simple but firm weekly plan as to what programs will be permitted and how much time overall may be spent in viewing. Any child's weekly schedule normally involves a certain amount of time for school, naps, outdoor play and indoor play.
By beginning so early, he knows that he has plenty of time to do thoroughly all the work he can be expected to do. All his work having been finished in good time, he has a long interval of rest in the evening before the timely hour when he goes to bed. After a sound night's rest, he rises early next morning in good health and spirits for the labors of a new day. Each tube-shaped microbot is a sandwich of three materials. A graphene outer layer, which binds to heavy metals. A middle layer of nickel, which gives the bots magnetic polarity, so they can be pulled through wastewater with magnets. And platinum inside for propulsion. Just add a bit of peroxide to the wastewater, and it'll react with the platinum to form water and oxygen bubbles. To understand the past you have to be able, as far as possible, to think as the people in the period you are studying thought. The example of what it must have been like to be a peasant in the Middle Ages is used. However, sensibilities change over time and we can't completely throw off the mentality of the present. Therefore, every age will have a slightly different perspective on the same period of the past, no matter what the facts are.
A university is not a business. More precisely, a not-for-profit college or university is significantly different than a for-profit business. A university has no owners it is a public trust. Without owners, it has no one to pay dividends to and no one for whom it must maximize its profits. A business has a single overriding goal, the maximization of return.